welcome to Human Reproduction. This is our first lesson and it's on spermatogenesis. Uh, before you start, please can you make sure that you've recapped meiosis um, and you should also complete parts one and two of the spermatogenesis activity. So pause the video and try that if you haven't already. Things that I'd like you to feel confident about in this session is that you can recall, describe and draw meiosis and that you can recall the male reproductive organs and state the location of spermatogenesis um, and that you can describe the key stages of spermatogenesis, linking it in with meiosis. So there's a really strong synoptic link with this particular topic. OK. So some of your questions on that spermatogenesis activity were these. So let's talk through them a little bit together. So the first one, how does meiosis lead to genetic variation? So hopefully we remembered that genetic variation in meiosis is a result of two things. The first one is crossing over. So this happens in prophase one of meiosis one. And this is basically where you are, or lengths of DNA are swapped between homologous chromosomes. So here we can see we've got a homologous pair. And if we look really closely, we can see that this length of DNA here has swapped for this length of DNA on the other chromosome in that chromosome pair. Now, what that means is that crossing over results in genetic variation in the gametes. So we can see here, this cell and also this cell look like they should be genetically um, identical, but because we've had crossing over, we can see that there's a little bit of variation. So they've both got a big red chromosome, they've both got a small blue one, um, but the red chromosomes aren't genetically identical because we've had a bit of crossing over here. Okay, and you can see that this has this chromosome has now got some of the genetic information from this one down here. Okay, and that would be different versions of the same gene potentially. And and this cell down here again isn't genetically identical because we've had some more crossing over occur down here. Uh, the second thing that leads to uh, genetic variation in meiosis is independent assortment. And independent assortment happens during meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. And it's basically how the chromosomes line up along the equator um, during metaphase. Okay, If you're not sure about that, just go back to the video, watch it through again, and try and really get your head around that concept. Um, and there are four gametes because there are two cell division stages. Okay, and each cell division stage produces two cells from one. So you might just want to test yourself on your meiosis knowledge. So maybe just pause the video, see if you can identify the stages of meiosis. And let's have a look at the answers for that. So hopefully we identified these stages here. Okay. And another little thing that you might find interesting is uh, there's a type of fruit, fruit fly um, whose sperm actually measures a thousand times longer than that of human sperm. So it measures about two inches long. And you can see here the fruit fly um, and the flagellum actually winds around it um, more than sort of twice, pretty much. So uh, maybe have a think about what the evolutionary sort of benefit might have been for that and just send your teacher some ideas because I'm sure they'd be really interested to discuss that with you. Okay, so uh, the reproductive organs within the male reproductive system. Um, so we're going to take a look at these and we should hopefully have identified these are the key structures. So um, a couple of other things in this image that obviously aren't part of the, the reproductive um, organs is the, the kidneys and we've also got the ureter. Basically the kidneys is where the urine is produced, you'll learn more about that later. And the urine is then deposited in the bladder. Um, now this does connect a little bit with the reproductive organs. So down here we've got the testicles and this is where sperm is made. Um, the sperm then travels via the vas deferens, okay, um, via the seminal vesicle, which produces mucus secretions to help with this, the sperm mobility. And also the prostate gland releases these alkali secretions because the sperm passes out of the penis via the urethra. Okay, And there might be um, some sort of residue of urine left in the urethra. So the prostate alkali secretions help neutralize that so it doesn't damage the sperm. Uh, we're going to look a little bit more at this structure on our next slide, so the epididymis. Okay, um, So if we zoom in on the testicle and have a look at sort of a cross-section of that, 
we can see some other really important structures in here. So the first one is the seminiferous tubules. Now this is the exact location of spermatogenesis, of where sperm are made. Uh, the sperm are made there and then they travel via the vasa efferentia, so this collection of sort of 20 odd tubes, into the epididymis. And the epididymis, this big green structure here, this is where sperm mature. Okay. Once they're mature, uh, they are released via the vas deferens out via the urethra out of the penis. So let's take a look then at the seminiferous tubule and what we're kind of looking at here, if I just go back to the last slide, is a cross section of the seminiferous tubule at this point. So if I was to cut in this direction here and look down that tubule, it would look like this. Now how uh, spermatogenesis occurs here is you've got um, germ cells, so sort of stem cells that exist on the outside of that seminiferous tubule and the process of meiosis happens from the outside into the centre, okay? So we would carry out some mitosis first uh, to divide and get more cells in these first couple of layers and then meiosis would happen until eventually you have these spermatozoa, these um, differentiated cells in the centre. Um, we'll look more at that in a second and link it in with meiosis, but a couple of other things to mention here. So we've also got the interstitial cells of the Leydig, um, so surrounding those seminiferous tubules. So these release testosterone, a really important hormone, as you guys know, um, for male gamete um, development. And we've also got Sertoli cells, so these nourish the spermatozoa as they're being formed in the seminiferous tubules. Okay, so let's just look at this process here. Okay, so let's see what's happening sort of from the outside of that seminiferous tubule into the centre to produce these differentiated cells. And the first thing is that we start off with primordial germ cells. So again, um, the germ cells are a, a type of stem cell um, that will become differentiated ultimately into spermatozoa. Okay, so the first thing that happens is the primordial germ cells divide by mitosis and you'd actually get two cells here, but we're just looking at one side of this um, just to fit it on the page. Um, and that would produce a type of a cell called a spermatogonium. And we can see that both of these cells are diploid, okay, um, because we've got two N. So the, the two represents the number of chromosomes in each homologous pair. So as you guys know, in humans, we have 23 homologous pairs, 46 chromosomes in total. So that just helps us identify that's a diploid cell. The spermatogonium is also a diploid cell. So this again divides by mitosis into another diploid cell called this primary spermatocyte. Now the primary spermatocyte is where meiosis starts. So we're going to have meiosis one happening here and that's going to produce a secondary spermatocyte. Okay, and these cells here are haploid. These secondary spermatocytes divide by meiosis two into early spermatids. These are also haploid. And then this process down here between the early spermatids and the spermatozoa is differentiation. So the early spermatids will develop flagellum these midsections as well, um, and they will become differentiated sperm cells. So I'd like you to pause the video and to see if you can identify in each of these um, lines which cell type we're looking at, and also if it's diploid or haploid. So you can see here I've written D or an H. So pause the video, have a go at that. Okay, and let's take a look at the answers. So we should hopefully have identified, again, it's quite straightforward, spermatogenesis, but we should have identified that these are the different cells that are produced. Um, the key thing here is it's actually very easy to mix up the names. So just take maybe 10 minutes or so practicing your recall for this process, because once you've memorized it, it's so much easier um, to get sort of higher marks on your exam questions. Okay, please pause the video and complete part three of your spermatogenesis activity. And let's take a look at that together. So this part of the activity, uh, you guys were asked to write an essay plan. So this is a suggested structure for your plan. Um, and this is actually a fairly detailed plan. You probably wouldn't have enough time to write this in the, um, in the exam. But um, 
the next part of your activity, you're going to be asked to type up a, an answer for this. Um, so maybe just annotate and add to your plan because you're going to need to use that for the next part of your activity. So the first thing that we should always be thinking about is with essay questions, what are the three subheadings that we're looking for? So you can see here we've got the first part, so describe the structure of the spermatozoa, describing the location and process of spermatogenesis. So that's our first subheading. Um, our second subheading is this one, so outline the importance of the seminal vesicles and Sertoli cells. And then our third subheading is this bit here, explain the importance of meiosis in sexual reproduction. So let's take a look at uh, paragraph one. So uh, describe the structure of spermatozoa. So normally it's actually quite nice if you can sort of sketch stuff obviously when you're doing the online essay you're not going to be able to do that uh, but you could describe it so we've got three different sections we've got a head section that contains the haploid nucleus we've got a midsection that contains mitochondria for atp synthesis and then the atp is used in the tail or the flagellum to help that sperm move uh, the location and process of spermatogenesis we've just been through, so we should hopefully remember this happens in the seminiferous tubules, and then we should also just memorise all of these different sperm cell types, and also if the cell is haploid or diploid. Okay, again, just a little bit of recall practice on that, and you can be getting really good marks for that. The second paragraph is this one, so outline the importance of the seminal fluid and also the Sertoli cells. So the seminal fluid is released from the seminal vesicles and it contains um, a carbohydrate fructose and this is used for uh, sperm mobility. So the fructose is actually used, it's broken down first <laughs> into monosaccharides and used by the mitochondria in this midsection here uh, to generate ATP for then the sperm to be able to swim. The Sertoli cells are located in the seminiferous tubules and these nourish the developing sperm. And then the final paragraph, so this is explain the importance of meiosis in sexual reproduction. So as we said at the very start, meiosis generates genetic variation through independent assortment and crossing over. Um, and you might want to give a bit more detail there. So um, you might want to talk a little bit about how independent assortment happens and how crossing over happens. Um, it also reduces the chromosome number, so we get haploid cells, and this maintains the diploid cell number through the generations. If you didn't half your DNA content every time gametes were produced, then every time you reproduced, um, your chromosome number would double. So if you think about how quickly um, that would happen through the generations, eventually you won't be able to fit all of the chromosomes in your cells. So that's everything that we've covered for this session. Um, just to kind of come back to the learning objectives, um, you should hopefully feel confident that you can recall, draw and describe meiosis, um, recall the structures within the male reproductive organs and also spermatogenesis. And I'd like you guys to just go back to your activity, complete parts four and five. Okay, thank you.